This is a picture of my father, Raul Gutierrez, who came to the United States in the year 1974, a day before his 16th birthday. And unlike any other um, person that comes to a country full of freedom, he didn't come to celebrate his birthday. Instead, he had to wake up to a pair of shoes, but not, but not, not any regular pair of shoes. There were a pair of working shoes that he had to wear that same day in the peach harvest. Now, he's 53 years old, um, 37 years later, and still working for the same employer, doing the same work, but carrying with him his old age that's affecting his performance. It wasn't until the year of 1997 when he decided to bring his family, us, to the United States. I was 11 years, but I still remember it like if it was yesterday, June 27, 1997. That same day, he took us, my brother and I, to his job site so he could show us how he earned his living. But most importantly, to make a point that he did not want us, his two sons, to end up doing the same work he did while growing up and still doing. He wanted us to get an education and live a happier life. I still remember the words he said to me while standing in the middle of the rows around people who were working nonstop. And they were, este es el trabajo que estarán haciendo día con día si no se enfocan en la escuela. This is the type of job you'll be doing day by day if you don't focus on school. They were very short words, but they were coming from his heart and were very meaningful. Even though I understood my father's point, I decided to work side by side along with him. Every summer until, my, until I decided to come to college. And I made this decision because I wanted to contribute to my household. I knew that my family had financial problems, and even though I was young, I knew I had to do something. So I had to put myself out there, work, do the same work my dad did, and help with the very little that I could. I understand all the sacrifices he had done for me. And I know that pursuing an education was a choice, was a good choice, and the right choice for my future. But I also knew that with a higher education was the solution to my father's way of life. And this motivated me to do good in school and I ended up graduating on the top class of my high school, got accepted and attended the University of California, Davis in 2006, 2006. And I knew that due to my past experiences that I had an interest in agriculture. But as I was taking courses, science classes in college, I started developing this interest in medicine but I think that the reason why I decided the path into the medical field was because while I was working in the fields, I witnessed not one worker, but many of them getting hurt while working, but still hesitating to go see a doctor because of the lack of resources. I graduated this past June from college, but during my last years, I was lucky enough to have found the perfect job for me, where I work as a junior student researcher for the Western Center for Agricultural Health and Safety at UC Davis, where I'm responsible for outreaching to immigrant communities and promote safe provisions such as 
the heat and illness prevention campaign by Cal OSHA. I am also part of research studies that focus on the welfare of farm workers. And on one of them, we're studying the dangers and effects of pesticide on farm workers and their families. And on the other one, I'm helping to make a plan to build a weight transfer equipment that will transfer the weight put on a worker's back while lifting heavy objects and transfer it to their legs. I enjoy my current job due to the fact that I am very interested and I want to go into agromedicine. This is because there are many problem areas in the agricultural which require health professional resources to identify those causes and ways to prevent them. My goal is to be part of this and help farm workers, my family, their families, myself, live a happier and healthier life. To wrap things up, I just want to thank everyone. And I would like to say that the one that should be standing here giving this presentation is not me. It should be my father. Because thanks to his sacrifice, and through all, all these years, I'm here standing in front of you giving this speech. Thank you, everyone.